Well, this this was a really scary incident that that occurred there as we were leaving. I don't remember the date. It was March the first, nineteen and forty-three, and we had gotten there. And been, we spent exactly thirty days, thirty-one days in Murmansk, and the Germans had a habit of bombing with Stuka dive bombers because they were terrifying and to anybody because they had an awful noise. What they would do is come in. To glide in because it was so close from their air base where they were is over in Finland, which is only 35 miles away from us. But they would come in over this cloud cover, and then just as they got over their target, they would dive and turn on their engines and have this loud screaming noise. So we were sitting there. The convoy was assembling to head back to the states, and 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 the sun came out. Any time the sun came out, you'd expect a bomber over you because they they really like to, they were, Murmansk was a critical port, really it was, all of the supplies going to Russia, most of them had to come through Murmansk, and it was a treacherous run, most, it was the second most bombed spot in the world at that time, it's second only to Malta, you know, and, but anyway, the uh, Stuka, we were sitting there waiting for other ships to get in, in, in line, and I heard this Stuka, and we all did, and of course, all the gunners were at their stations anyway. Uh, they were sitting strapped at their 30 millimeters. And and, and this uh, Stuka came in, wrong, an awful noise they have, and, and, and let his bomb go, but he missed us probably 100, maybe 200 feet. And we just got some shrapnel hit the ship, that's all. Anyway, uh, as, he, as he came in, this gunner was on him. Uh, and. Uh, and he, sh he actually uh, hit him or somebody. A lot of ships in, in the river there were firing, but we what well, we didn't know and what the gunner didn't know was that on his on the tail of this Stuka was a Russian uh, Russian plane, and the plane was an American built Bel Air Cobra. And the reason why the, the Russia used so many of them at, Mer at Murmansk was it was hilly all around Murmansk. And didn't have any level places to to build a, an air base, a, a normal air base. Well, runway length was too too short. And anyway, but the Bell Air Cobra had a vertical climb, the fastest of any any plane in the American arsenal. So there was it was a Bell Air Cobra. Well, the gunner uh, he didn't he never ceased firing because this he saw this plane and he didn't have time to identify it and. Down it came, and, and he he got him, and the, the plane crashed on the other side of the river. Well, of course it was frightening, but I was at my battle station, which was at at the magazine up on the top deck, uh, where they had uh, ammunition stored, and my job was to load load uh, magazines. There was a kind of a snail-shaped magazine that. Uh, you put these 20 millimeter projectiles in, and you put. I remember we put one out of every six was a tracer, and I don't. Remember, I forgot how many bullets they shot a minute, but anyway, it was pretty pretty fast firing gun. It was a Swiss Ulrichen 20 millimeter, and but I was I was waiting outside just outside the magazine watching, and and uh, but I saw the, the gunner officer yell cease fire. He yelled cease fire as soon as he. Uh, he recognized the Bell Air Cobra, so he said, "Cease fire, cease fire!" And I heard him; I could hear his voice. And of course, all these gunners had earphones, and they could hear him too. But this one didn't pay any attention. He just, he just, <laughs> he just saw this plane. He was on it, and uh, and so the gunner, the gunner officer went over and had to throw off, took off his leather glove and slapped the kid in the face. I damn it! I said, I said, "Cease fire!" Well, as when we got into Scotland, uh, which two or three weeks later, uh, we were summoned. The gunner officer was, and the skipper, were summoned to uh, to a uh, an inquiry, and with the U.S. Navy, and the Russians were there too, because uh, they had they had filed a complaint or something. Anyway, uh, the Stone managed to convince them it was un unavoidable, completely unavoidable, which it was. And 
So that, but he got a medal for that. He got a medal for his work on that.